So now we need to do an antibody screen on the patient. The only way you can form an antibody is if you've been exposed to a foreign antigen or an antigen that you don't possess. So that would only be through transfusion or pregnancy. If the patient has those antibodies, and these are unexpected antibodies, they're going to be in the patient plasma. So what we're going to test them against is known antigens, which are our screening cells, also called surges screens, one, two, and three. Those are labeled with Roman numerals. So when we label our two, we're going to go back, use the patient's initials, Roman numeral one, on the first two. Patient initials, Roman numeral two. And on the third tube, you're going to do Roman numeral three. It's best not to write one, two, or three because the reagents actually have the Roman numerals, so we want to match those. To the antibody screen, we need to add the patient plasma. So again, we're going to go into our patient specimen, double check your name, make sure it matches the initials on the tube. Squeeze your pipette, go down and get plasma. And again, we're going to add two drops of plasma. We're adding our lightest reagent first. And then we're going to save this plasma, put it back on the specimen. Throw your pipette away. The next thing we need to do is add the reagents to our one, two, and three. These are cells, again, so we need to make sure that they are thoroughly mixed. This is a room numeral one. You want to make sure that you get this into the tube that you also labeled one. If you happen to get these mixed up, it's like messing up the answer key to a puzzle. And we won't get the right answer. This is two and it's going into the tube labeled two. The other thing is to make sure that someone has screwed the cap on prior to you because if this is unscrewed and you go to mix it, you're going to have reagents everywhere. This is number three, so I'm adding this. So we want our antibody, if it's present, to attach to the antigen on the screening cells, but we need to give that, um, we need to force that reaction to happen. So we're gonna put these tubes in the centrifuge. So just give them a little shake like this. And then we're gonna start in the centrifuge. I always start in spot one, because I like to keep things in order. And this is like a triangle, so that's how we're balancing this. Close your centrifuge, lock it. Needs to be at 3250 for 15 seconds, and we hit the start button. Okay. This stage is the immediate spin phase. We're going to be doing three phases with our antibody screen. So now that I've forced my reaction to happen, I want to take my tubes out, come back to my rack keeping them in order. Okay. So I'm going to take the Roman numeral one tube and we're going to do the same thing as we did with ABL. We're going to do the wiggle and tilt. So we take our tube, holding it loosely so it can go back and forth. And we're wiggle and then tilt it back. So you can see if any agglutination goes back up the cell suspension. This looks like a negative. So I'm going to go to my worksheet, and I have a place that says antibody detection, and there's a spot for Roman numeral one. And again, this is our immediate spin phase, so we're going to be putting a negative here. The next tube we're going to do is number two. Same thing. Every once in a while, you'll get an air bubble in here. And you can remove that with a pipette, but it's easiest just to keep going unless it obscures your illumination. We call that negative. Again, I'm holding the tube in my hand while I write the reaction down so I'm not mixing up my tubes. And Roman numeral three. And this one is also negative. So now we've read our antibody screens at immediate spin. Our next phase is, we've put the antigen and the antibody together, but now we need to give them time to incubate. But one thing we can do, if I just let these go in, I have to leave them for 30 to 60 minutes. So we're gonna use a reagent called LIS, 
It actually says Immuoad due to a patent on here, but this is a low ionic strength solution. This is like a catalyst. And we're going to add two drops to each tube because then it cuts our incubation down to 10 minutes to 30 minutes, which is great for patient care. So I'm going to add two drops. The way to remember that is you added two drops of plasma, so you need to equal that amount. And we add two drops of this. This is called a potentiator or an enhancement, and there are other ones that can be used. Mercy uses this, but there's also PEG and albumin, and they each just have different properties. It's just a different way to do things. Now I want to put these where they're going to react at the best temperatures. Antibodies like certain temperatures, and these need to go at body temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius. And this is my incubator here, and this is going to keep them nice and warm so the antigen antibody have time to come together. And we're going to let this sit. Um, as I said, it's 10 to 30 minutes, but typically at Mercy, we do it for 15 minutes. So we need to set our timer here. If you grab your timer, and it has zeros on all here, hit timer one channel here at the top. If it says 15 minutes right here, you just hit it a second time. Make sure the numbers are going. And then I just let that incubate until it beeps. So our timer just went off. 15 minute incubation is up. If there's been any binding of the antigen antibody, I need to spin that reaction so that I can visually see it. So I need to take my tubes, put them in the centrifuge again. This is considered to be the 37 degree phase, I'm making a triangle. Same spin time in 15 seconds. What we're doing here is allowing the antigen antibody, if they bound together, we're forcing that reaction to happen. That's what the incubation was for, to allow the antibody a chance. Some antibodies can react right away, others need a little more time. So this is our second phase. It's considered 37 degrees. So I'm gonna take my tubes out. And we do what we've been doing all along. We're going to do the wiggle and tilt method to see if we have any agglutination present. So we'll wiggle. This is tube number one. It's a little harder to get that cell button off the bottom now because we've just centrifuged it and it's been sitting. So we have to keep shaking until it's completely off the bottom if we don't want to miss a reaction. So patient initials, this is screening cell one. So we're gonna go to our worksheet again, holding our tube while we write our reaction down. And this is at 37 and it's a negative. Go to tube number two. Hold it in our hand while we write our reaction down. This time make sure you're under Roman numeral number two for the 37 degrees. Every hospital will have a different way of recording, so you have to get used to that specific hospital. This is screening cell three. And remember it's a tilt. We're not gonna go all the way back. This is also negative. So you write it down under number three. Then we're ready for our next phase, which is the Coombs phase. screen is to do the Coombs phase. The one thing we need to keep in mind is there's antibody bound to antigen possibly in these tubes, but there's also extraneous antibodies, which are also called proteins. So at this phase, before we can add our Coombs reagent, we need to wash away anything that's not bound to the antigen that's on these cells. So after our 37 degrees, we're going to take these three tubes and we're going to put them in our cell washer and it will dispense saline and wash up the cells. And the only thing that will remain is an antibody that's bound to the cells. So when we go to use the cell washer, it's going to be dispensing saline. But we need to prime it to make sure the right amount of saline is going to come out. So we take our graduated cylinder. This is the spot where the saline comes out. It goes directly into here. 
you can see underneath the arch there's a little spigot and it will dispense out into each individual tube. So I'm going to put my graduated cylinder right over that hole and then I'm going to hold this here because the pressure will cause it to flip back. Our saline is down below so gravity makes it fall back. What we want to do is hit auto to prime. You'll also notice those are the buttons that have a small square in the bottom right hand corner. This amount should be right at 40 mils, so when you see that it is, you can take it and pour it down the drain, which in this centrifuge is right down here in this part, and that's where the waste goes. Then I'm going to, since I know my saline is prime, I'm going to take my tubes, find the number one spot, put it in, skip three, put it in, skip three. So my tubes are balanced in a triangle, it's just harder to see than the other centrifuge. Then I'm going to close the lid, and to close this lid, we need to hit the lid button, close. But I want to wash this three to four times, so this time I'm going to hit auto, four, and the start button. Okay, so when we open this centrifuge, we need to hit the lid button, pull it up here. Our saline came in and washed our cells, so they are much smaller now because they're washed very well, but if there was antibody bound to those, it would stay on even through the washing process. So I have my tubes one, two, and three, and I'm going to add Coombs reagent. The Coombs reagent actually has a dye added to it that's green, just to make sure that we add it. This is the phase where as a student, when you're in the cell washer or before you add Coombs, you need to notify the tech that you're working with on the bench, so just look up to see who's straight ahead of you. And when you add Coombs, we're going to match that to the number of drops but you need to let that tech know because they're going to come back and read this phase with you. So it's two drops to each tube. And the cooms usually just sits here by the cell washer so that's the only time. We're going to shake that a little bit and then we're going to put it back in our centrifuge. Okay, so we've added our cooms. We need to force this reaction to happen again so we're going to centrifuge them over here in this centrifuge. Same speed, 32.50, 15 seconds, and we'll hit start. At this point, your tech should be over here with you because they're going to read it over your shoulder. We do that for two reasons, to protect you as a student and also because you're entering information on the tech's ID. So they need to see you and they need to help you pick up any weak reactions that would be present. uninterrupted testing so we want to keep every phase we wouldn't go to break right now and just leave these tubes set they need to be read with the coombs as soon as they're taken out of the cell washer so then we're going to take our first tube your tech's going to be here with you same technique wiggle and tilt these will look a lot cleaner because they have been through the cell washer So this is number one screening cell and it's negative. So I'm going to go to my worksheet again and under the one spot there's a phase marked AHG for anti-human lobulin. And I'm going to put those right there. Put a negative there. And we go on to the second tube. And we're going to wiggle and tilt until it's all the way off the bottom, which is a little bit harder after the washing process. And this also looks negative. And then our third screening cell. go to number three under the coom space and we mark that as negative but we're not completely done yet okay our coom space is the last space so we do those three but we're still not done because to call this complete we have to make sure that that washing process was adequate so to these tubes that have the cooms in them when you get a negative reaction we need to add a drop of check cells check cells are actually O positive cells that have antibody coated to them so we know for sure that check cells should agglutinate the cones. 
just like with any cellular reagent, make sure I mixed it, and we're going to add one drop of check cells to each of our negatives. And without doing this phase, our testing is not complete. We can't call it complete. So we're going to spin those down. And this time I expect to get a negative reaction, or a positive reaction. So we're going to take these out of the centrifuge, and I expect to get a positive reaction here because I've added my cones. Cones is such an important part of the test that we want to ensure that we added it. So we're going to look at screening cell one again. Notice this time I'm getting chunks that come off the bottom, and I'm seeing a lot of agglutination that's occurring or clumping of the cells. The background's still pretty cloudy. My cell button's off. So this is a two plus. So I'm going to go under screening cell one, and there's a spot for CC or check cells. Okay, so we're going to read the second cell. As I said, we're expecting a positive reaction, so it should happen pretty quick. Check cells should be a one to two plus. So this is number two. Going to the number two under CC. And then our third and final cell. This one is also positive. At this point, your antibody screen is complete because you've done immediate spin, 37 in Coombs, and your check cells. So you should have negative, 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 and then our antibody screen interpretation is going to be negative. We didn't see any reaction. Screening cells should detect about 99% of clinically significant antibodies. So I can say with assurance that this patient does not have any clinically significant antibodies. Thank you.